Breaking, attention AI and robot enthusiasts. Shanghai's Fourier Intelligence has just launched its next generation humanoid robot, the GR2. This thing is taller, stronger, smarter, and overall a major upgrade from the first model, the GR1. We're going to break down everything about this new humanoid and why it's a game changer. Not just for tech enthusiasts, but for people who may actually rely on these robots for help in their daily lives. Now for those who remember, the GR1 was pretty impressive when it launched. It had 300 newton meters of torque, which allowed it to lift nearly its own weight, about 55 kilograms. But the design was a bit… skeletal. Let's be honest, it looked a bit like something from a sci-fi movie, kind of spindly, and lacked a lot of the functionality you'd want from a practical day-to-day -day robot helper. Instead, it had these purple plastic grab rails on its pelvis area, which got the job done, but didn't exactly scream high-tech. But the GR2? Oh man, the GR2 is an entirely different beast. It's stronger, more dexterous, and has been designed with more real-world functionality in mind. In this video, we'll break down exactly what's new and exciting about this upgraded model, where it fits in the growing humanoid robot space, and what it means for the future of robotics. Let's start with the basics, size and strength. So, the first thing you'll notice about the GR2 is that it's bigger. The GR1 stood at about 1.65 meters. That's roughly five feet, five inches. But the GR2 is taller, coming in at five feet, nine inches or 1.75 meters. That's about eye level with a lot of adults, making it more practical for interacting with humans in spaces like homes or healthcare facilities. It also weighs 63 kilograms, which is eight kilograms more than the GR1. And that extra weight isn't just for show. It's because the GR2 is built with stronger motors that pack even more punch. Now the GR1 already had 300 Newton meters of torque in its actuators, which allowed it to perform some pretty impressive feats of strength but the GR2? We're looking at 380 Newton meters of torque in its biggest motors. To put that in perspective, that's enough power to lift patients into wheelchairs, move heavy furniture, or even operate industrial tools. While Fourier hasn't officially announced its full lifting capacity yet, we can expect a significant improvement over the GR1's already impressive abilities. A robot with hands. Finally. Now, one of the biggest upgrades in the GR2 is something that seems pretty basic for a humanoid robot. Hands. The GR1 didn't have any. It relied on those purple grab rails for lifting and moving things. But Fourier clearly heard the feedback, because the GR2 has been outfitted with a fully functional pair of robotic hands. Let's talk about these hands for a minute, because they're a critical part of any humanoid robot. The GR2's hands offer 12 degrees of freedom. For comparison, a human hand has about 27 degrees of freedom, so we're still not quite at human-level dexterity, but we're getting there. What's even more impressive is that the GR2's hands feature tactile force sensing, meaning the robot can feel out shapes and materials, adjust its grip in real time, and dynamically respond to the environment. So, it's not just about grabbing objects. It's about grabbing them safely and securely. Each hand can lift up to three kilograms. That might not sound like a lot, but think about the types of tasks this robot is being designed for. Assisting the elderly or disabled, helping people move around, or performing light household tasks. In those scenarios, precision and safety are far more important than brute strength. It's not going to be hauling boxes in a factory like some of the other humanoids we've seen, but that's not really the point. Built for real-world interaction. So, who exactly is the GR2 for? Fourier has made it clear that their humanoid robots are home helpers, designed primarily for elderly and disabled patients. And when you think about the way populations are aging, particularly in places like Japan, China, and parts of Europe, it makes a lot of sense. These countries are facing a major shortage of human caregivers. That's where robots like the GR2 could come in, stepping up to help people with everyday tasks like getting in and out of bed, moving around the house, or assisting with physical therapy. The design of the GR2 reflects this purpose. 
just like the GR1. It has those distinctive grab rails at the pelvis area, which are there for stability and support when helping someone move. These grab handles give the robot a slight medical or rehabilitation look, but they're incredibly practical for its intended use. And with the increased strength from its 380 newton meter actuators, the GR2 is more than capable of lifting people safely. A robotics developer's dream. Now let's talk about the brains behind this thing. The GR2 is a learning platform designed for commercial and academic development. It works with common and open source robotics development software tools like ROS, Mujoco, and NVIDIA's Isaac Lab. If you're a developer, this is where things get really exciting. The robot's onboard AI systems are built to learn by watching or doing. You can control the GR2 in a variety of ways, through VR telepresence, which allows you to operate the robot remotely or via direct commands. But one of the coolest methods is called lead-through programming. You literally grab and move its limbs, showing it what you want it to do. This kind of hands-on training makes it much easier to teach the robot new tasks, especially in complex environments like a person's home. It's still far from being a full consumer product, but Fourier has been manufacturing the GR1 in bulk for development partners. These robots are going out to research labs, universities, and commercial robotics programs around the world, where developers can experiment with them, build new applications, and refine the AI to make these robots even more capable. A modular, practical design. On top of everything else, the GR2 has a modular design. This means that parts can be easily swapped out or upgraded without having to rebuild the entire robot from scratch. This is a big deal for long-term use and maintenance. The design also integrates cables and wiring into the robot's sleek bodywork, making it more compact and tidier than the previous model. It's clear that Fourier has thought about the practical challenges that come with real-world use. Maintenance is simplified, costs are reduced, and it accelerates the transition from computer simulations to real-life interactions. And that's crucial because it brings us closer to a future where humanoid robots aren't just theoretical. They're actively helping people in their homes, hospitals, and beyond. The broader humanoid robot race. But Fourier isn't the only company pushing the envelope on humanoid robots. China is making a massive play in this space. The government has set an ambitious goal to mass-produce humanoid robots by 2025 and dominate the global market by 2027. And it's not just Fourier. Tencent, one of China's tech giants, recently launched their own robot, the Xiaowu, which combines walking and wheeled movement to assist humans in environments like homes and healthcare facilities. Other Chinese companies are getting in on the action too. Pudu Robotics launched the Pudu D7, a semi-humanoid robot designed to autonomously ride elevators and deliver items in places like hotels and hospitals. Then there's the VersaBoat BB-1 by Langston Robotics, which uses advanced AI and cameras to navigate its surroundings. Meanwhile, Unitree Robotics has its own compact humanoid, the G1, making waves as a smaller, more affordable option. The humanoid race is heating up worldwide and China is emerging as a major player. Fourier is well positioned in this market with the GR2, but they're not the only ones trying to bring robots into everyday life. A look ahead. So what does all this mean for the future? Well, the GR2 is a huge step forward in making humanoid robots more practical, more powerful, and more capable of functioning in real world environments. It's not quite ready to take over factories or office jobs, but it's definitely on track to make a significant impact in healthcare, home care, and beyond. More importantly, the open source development platform that comes with the GR2 means that developers all over the world are going to be able to contribute to the evolution of these robots. We're talking about a future where machines like the GR2 can adapt, learn, and perform increasingly complex tasks. And that's exciting. Thanks for sticking with me through this deep dive into Fourier's new GR2 robot. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more content on the future of robotics, AI, and technology, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next one.